What is up YouTube, it's Ricky Balber and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to change the front brake pads on the Indian Scout Bobber. It should be the same on all the Scouts including the Scout, Scout 60, Scout Bobber, Scout Bobber 60, Scout Bobber 20 and the Scout Rogue. What you're going to need is some brake pads. These are actually from the Indian website. These are the OEM ones. It's part number 2206139. You're also going to need a ratchet with a 8mm hex bit on there. That's good to have love. You're gonna need some brake grease, also a T25 Torx bit. You're gonna need some brake fluid, but one of the steps actually says to clean the brake components with brake fluid. But always use a new bottle, never use old brake fluid ever. And I suppose you could use brake clean. I actually bought this ahead of time before I even looked in the manual. Another thing that I, I use is this little uh, torque wrench adapter, and this goes onto the end of there. It worked pretty good. Oh, and a pry bar. The pry bar is used to push back the pistons when you're trying to get the brake pads in there because you want them to be separated enough where you can fit them over the disc. I used the pry bar for that because it was handy. That worked out really well. You could use a screwdriver though if you wanted to. So stick around, I'm going to show you how to do all this. to give a quick shout out to Valor Cycle on YouTube. Um, I did watch his video and just, just to see how easy it was and uh, he did a really good job on his. He did front and back if you're interested in uh, doing both of them at the same time. His does show front and rear pads. I'm just doing the front today. Mine are about 5% is what they told me when I got my tire change. They wanted to charge me X amount for that and I figured, you know what, seems pretty easy. So I'm gonna give it a shot on my Scout Bobber. step is actually to remove the pin. Uh, the pin is right here in the back. I'll put a little arrow on there since I'm using both hands. So remove that pin as step two. There it is. I'm not sure if you guys can see that from that angle. But I've got this little magnetic thing. I'm going to put all my parts in here for the time being. Alright, so your next step, take that pin out. able to take off your over brake pads. Ah, uh, look at that. So I don't know if you can see this, but this is what I have left on here. And this is a new one, so it's a big difference. 9,500 miles is when I had 5% left. It says wash brake caliper components with new brake fluid, dot four before assembly. Do not wipe. The big one. The brake fluid off after washing that component. So we're gonna do that. Make sure the brake fluid is new, by the way. You never want to use old brake fluid for anything. There's no reason to ever use old brake fluid. This is working.
need to apply grease to this part and also to that part. I got this grease right here. I'm gonna grease it up. Don't put too much. Gotta make sure it snaps in there. So that's back in there. Okay. okay, the brake pads and the pin are the last thing to go in there. Uh, curved side down with the hole towards you. And then you want to have it sit into the bracket up there. This is hard to do both record and do the brakes at the same time. Okay, so both of those are sitting in there pretty well. The last thing should be that pin again. Everything's all lined up, which is a good sign. So I'm gonna put these screws back in. There is a torque spec for these. I'm gonna look it up in the book. So I'm gonna use the uh, regular wrench to get those in there. Then I'm gonna use the torque wrench to set it proper torque. You notice I'm doing them little by little. I don't ever tighten down just one completely tight. I always go back and forth to everything. And I'm gonna try my little torque wrench to see how that goes. Who else has weird shit happen like this in their neighborhood? It's just so special.